our voice of prayer bringing heaven to our demonstration of the spirit and power that's by holy spirit power resurrection power <laughs> for what god has purposed and this is serving the lord of glory in the body of christ let's pray over the teaching we're excited about tonight we're excited what god is going to do but hebrews 4 and 12 says for the word of god is living and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart father we thank you <laughs> that you uh, have the sword of the spirit <laughs> with which will uh, 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 go in the places to cut away what is not required uh, we have to have uh, the peace of God and too many people uh, think they're in peace but then they're running to the next line to get in to, to do something that's against God's plan it's against God's intent it's against what God purposed in the kingdom uh, of heaven father we thank you for you the majesty of you the glory of you majesty is not in tiger woods I've heard he's a good golf player. I've seen him play. Uh, but majesty can only be applied to God. Majesty cannot be applied to chaos in streets. Our majesty is of God, of holiness. That attitude of holiness, that we're holy unto God because God has made us holy through salvation. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have become believers by faith. We stand in truth. We believe in truth. We move by truth, but we will not speak lies against God's truth. We will not change the Bible. You cannot change the Bible. Look at your hands. Are they beginning uh, to curl up and gnarl up because you're uh, putting your hand to something that you're trying to change that is not of God? God, you are glorious, you are mighty, you are majestic, you are the great I am in our midst, you are healer, provider, prince of peace, almighty, everlasting. You are uh, eternal in, in what we know as eternally, uh, in that which is life with you. But we also know that there is that of taking uh, uh, that which is the kingdom of God and to hold that peace. And not just as the, uh, having the inward peace, but then as going out to battle. Yes, the battle is the Lord's, but Father, we thank you today for your peace that not only is he, not only garrisons and mounts guard over heart and minds, but Father, as we go through, we will speak peace to chaos and our anarchy in Jesus' name. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for Jesus, the prophet, the teacher, uh, he who came uh, to deliver uh, he is king. We thank you for Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way in this teaching. We thank you for the power of the Lord and that uh, this gospel will go forth, Father, in the power of God, Almighty God, in Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. We thank you for the blood that covers it now as it spreads around the world in Jesus' name. Uh, the the uh, uh, teaching tonight, violent, take it by force. I'm excited because this is a continuation from last week that a uh, call to prayer and wait in dimension that we had on May 25th. And, and today we're taking in Matthew 11 and 12 uh, from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. That's holding truth and it's giving a uh, truth. Uh, it's giving that to when somebody will speak chaos to you or somebody says, sends one and says, well, this is a warning. Well, let me give you a warning. God's coming back soon. Are you ready to face him? Warning, flashing lights, warning. God is coming. The violent take it by force. Well, Matthew 11 and Matthew 12, well, the cross was an instrument of death, symbolizing not the bearing of any particular burden or distress, but a willingness to give one sacrificial life for the Father. And we saw this in Jesus. And we are to receive as messengers the Lord's representatives Re is in that same uh, path of receiving Him, Jesus, because uh, the Lord has sent them. And so our receiving that person, a prophet, a, a righteous one or a little one, is tantamount to one receiving whom the fa Father has sent. Uh, and you will know the, the ones who are, are not out in anarchy and chaos. Because there should be that peace in you and, so, and say, no, I stand against that. I stand against chaos and anarchy. You're not going to come against me with that because that's going to cause chaos in the body. It's going to cause an anarchy. 
And so in the last teaching, uh, Call to Prayer and Wait and Dimension, uh, uh, May 25th was a scripture that stood out, Deuteronomy 33 and 27. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemies before you say, destroy. Another was Jesus calming the storm scene in the place of the Sea of Galilee. They were to move to the other side uh, in ministry of the kingdom that had come. Uh, John 6, 19 through 21, 19. Uh, Therefore, when Jesus perceived they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed. Uh, It goes on. It must have been 16 to 21. must be 16. I have 19. Sorry, it's it's 16. So when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, and uh, they got into the boat and went over to the sea towards Capernaum. It was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. And so the the sea uh, arose because of this great wind. You can see this out here a lot of times on here because it's been, uh, been described here as the Columbia Gorge, the same as where Jesus was at the Sea of Galilee. Uh, a number of teachings we've seen uh, by this woman, a uh, pastor out of... I think it's Georgia. But she describes this as the great wind was blowing. And so when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, and they were afraid. And, and then Jesus said in his eye, do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. Um, uh, when Jesus uh, told people to go into, uh, <laughs> go into uh, take the promised land, they told them to, to go say, like uh, we, we read about Joshua going in and in Jericho um, there was going to be battle but they were wanting them to have the peace the peace of God to get to garrison and mount guard over their hearts but they're still going into battle you're you're in the battle understand there, there's demonic activity it wants to take you down into hell with with them there are people being manipulated by demonic activity even now uh, to take you down and so you're supposed to have the peace of God, but understand you're supposed to stand and speak against what that is. Right. You speak against it. You know, John the Baptist didn't mind calling them uh, the Pharisees a breed of vipers. He wasn't afraid of them. Uh, he, <laughs> he knew what they were all about. I mean, they had added to uh, what God had given. How many more? We'll see that shortly. But they were adding to the gospel. They were adding what to do on the Sabbath. And they, in that, they were profaning the Sabbath. Has anyone ever thought of that? And so, but Jesus came to earth to bring the peace of God. He brought the salvation. And the, that peace that was with God came through Jesus. Um, yet this does not describe our positions in glory that Jesus speaks of as when he speaks of the reward. And we're going to look at the rewards today for the scriptures. Rewards is to reign with Christ during the millennial kingdom. Every believer will have eternal life, but not every believer will reign with Christ in his kingdom. Rewards will take one uh, into the kingdom to reign. Matthew talks of these rewards, and John speaks of eternal life. 1 Corinthians 4 and 5, Then shall each man have his praise from God. Uh, Yet then shall each man have his praise from God. This is Paul. So salvation is right now, but rewards is in our future. It's coming soon. And these that are putting up warning signs and whatever and trying to uh, turn turn our, uh, our um, freedom to say it's a democracy. This is a republic. This is one republic, under one nation under God. It's a republic. It's not a democracy. Never has been, never will be. Go read the Constitution. Go read the Bill of Rights and then see. Let's sit down and talk. And so, but this is uh, rewards will be one uh, uh, that is in our future. Um, remember what God created, he called good. When creating man, well, he did not not so speak this about uh, man being a good thing. He created man, and then he created him a helpmate. Uh, he did not create him another man. And you have too many men getting together to either say they're a couple or, you know, they're something else. Uh huh. But understand, rewards expresses the righteousness of God, because He recompenses the saints according to their works. It doesn't say to changing their sex. Uh, it is our Father who is not just gracious, nor is He only righteous. He's both grace and righteousness. Saving sinners is His act of grace. 
rewarding saints is his act of righteousness. So in the gospel, the book of Revelation uh, reveals a judgment of the saved. It's the place of rewards. So people as believers in Jesus will read pages of righteousness, the Christian and his works as a believer, and their victory will always be that victory. Remember the word of God is living and powerful and sharp. Jesus <laughs> never denotes the kingdom people as victim. He calls them to see the violent spiritual conflict and warfare. It's not a softness. Uh, here in Matthew 11, 8, it says, Surely I say to you, among those born of women, there is not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. You know, uh, <laughs> was John the Baptist easy and smooth? <laughs> he was in their face. Brood of vipers. Would you we be willing to call, go up to somebody and call them a brood of vipers or something? You know, we were civilized. Well, they were civilized then. Um, Jesus mentioned it, of uh, being the brood of vipers. But it says here, those, of born, those that are born among women, there's not yet risen one greater, has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom is greater than he. His kingdom and expansion is sword and fire. This is neither political, it's not militant or military style. Matthew 10, 34. Matthew 10, 34. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. He made peace with God, but he didn't come to bring peace on the earth. He, 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 he gave us the opportunity to receive peace from God so we would know what it looked like because then you know that, you know, Tom, Dick, or Harry standing next to you has probably got some kind of demonic activity in how you would stand against that. You are to love your neighbor as yourself, but you will certainly cast that demon out. And he says, I've come to set a man, uh, I've come to set a man, he said, against his father, a daughter, against her mother, a daughter-in-law, against her mother-in-law, and a man against his enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. You, know, you have to lose your life to find out what you're really supposed to be doing. There's too many remember the doctrine from when they were children. I mean there were some things that the Lord had to get out of us from our youth. Right. And there's still too many that's trying to carry and, and about loving the neighbor as yourself but you you have to understand what the peace of God is because you have to have peace in here but if you're all jumbled in here then you're going to be jumbled out there and you're going to make all kinds of wax. You know you're going to funky town. And there was a song about that. This is it said we're <laughs> it's jumbled, it's upside down, right. and nobody wants to go there. Uh, we know that, that Jesus calls us that we're to be loyal to Him, to recognize and anticipate personal discipleship, that commitment that can result in division and rejection. So either you you are with Him, or what is your personal dis discipleship? What is your commitment? Because if it's not loyal to Him, what is it? Because you will at some point reject him, and you see it in some churches because they're choosing culture. They're 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 choosing culture. Uh, Luke twelve forty nine. I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wished it were already kindled. But uh, I have this baptism to be baptized with, and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. That's Holy Spirit. That's Holy Spirit and how he wanted the, the baptism to go out for all people to be able to pray in tongues. Praying God's language on earth to go through a situation, to do your work, to do ministry. Uh, do you suppose that I came to give peace you know, on this earth, he says, or, or not at all, but rather division. So he said, I didn't come here to give peace on earth. Uh, he says, um, he didn't do it all but rather for division. So I want to get to this waging peace. This was noted by John Paul Jackson and this is a, a, a couple of sentences but he said that contrary to the modern western thought here in America that peace is fairly a violent word. Now this uh, gentleman uh, well known uh, for his you know, prayers uh, he had uh, a lot of dreams. Uh, he kind of reminded me of Joseph, one of those Joseph. 
but he knew a lot about the word how the Holy Spirit would speak to him and the teachings that he had and he passed um, February 2015 he died some 10 days after our friend did so it's it's easy to remember uh, but he's a, a awesome teacher but in the Greek he has noted that peace was to obtain his quietness removing what seeks to distract and destroy you and we have that even from you know in Washington DC we have people who want you to look at something so they can do something over here they're they're doing this and they're sending money over here they're sending money to China and so they're 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 wanting you to look at something else oh hot dog let's look at the you know the border and they're they're getting all this money together to send somewhere else and so they they want to d distract, uh, destruction, and so he says, uh, this distract <laughs> is to destroy. Um, uh, so this is not a compliant serenity when we have this peace, but it's aggressive, taking out the forceful extraction. Uh, while reading this, I was thinking of this, well, if a dentist must remove something in your mouth causing pain, then it must be removed by a forceful extraction. They're going to play with it and, and you know, just kind of tip it and touch it. No, they're going to take you and give you something. They're going to jerk it out. And that's why we need God's word to jerk out what doesn't need to be there so that when you get in the place where you bold as a lion, you can speak to that demonic activity that's like a monkey on his back and cast it off of him to be bold as a lion. And so th this was very good. He he put this that peace is not merely a state of mind. It means to destroy and remove the chaos and anarchy around you. I was also reading about peace as uh, it's a Hebrew word. <laughs> and this uh, Hebrew is pictographs comprising this word of peace. It, it means to destroy or remove chaos and anarchy. And when Jesus spoke, peace be with you, well, let me know, let me tell you, he was in somebody's face. If we're saying peace to somebody when we're leaving, where well, you're in the face of the enemy because of the, you love that person, but the enemy that's standing behind them going to make them sin. They're going to go take another bottle. They're going to take another shot. They're going to do this. But you're saying, a peace be with you. And it's not implying a greeting, but issuing a command to the chaos and anarchy in disciples' lives or those following you that they be cast that be cast away from them because chaos has to leave your life uh, uh, anarchy has to leave your life Jesus was saying may the chaos and anarchy that's trying to keep you from doing what God wants you to do be removed from your life peace is an active implement to remove to root up and demolish every single every single every single work of darkness meant to keep God's peace. Uh, you know, when they were going into Canaan or, or any of the places they told them to go, God was always saying he was going to be with them. But do you understand they had to take his peace in their hearts because there was going to be chaos and anarchy as they went into the promised land. Well, God's just going to be our peace, and he's just going to be here with us. But you're not going to do it from the lazy boy recliner of life. I like recliners, but this peace, uh, uh, 1 John 3 and 8, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might be to destroy the works of the, the devil. Uh, for this purpose, he was uh, manifested. So it says, for the, this purpose, the Son of God is manifested and might destroy the works of the devil. God's peace will tear apart the anarchy around us. It dissolves the tumult. <laughs> we could say that God's peace is a weapon, not just our refuge. You know, no master madness or, uh, you know, um, uh, God has to be our leader. Pills will not help you. Magic masters, those who want to um, do a slide of hand and move money over here and do this over there that by manipulation they've chosen to direct you into that which is not significant at the moment uh, they're trying to do um, you know something else <laughs> um, I wanted to give this uh, to you um, you don't have it on your sheet but um, it's just a little 
peace, but is uh, speaking to Aaron and to his sons, uh, God was saying, Thus you shall bless the sons of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Number 6, 23 to 26. Well, this was a, an Aaronic blessing, but it's, uh, it was like a pun, because God told Aaron to bless Aaron, uh, uh, Israel with peace while they're getting ready to go conquer the land. They're going into battle. Well, I was told I wouldn't have to battle. I was just told I was just supposed to stand here and just look good. No, you've got a mouth, and God wants you to be a mouthpiece. He wants you to be bold, but he doesn't want you to be wimpy. You have to have a backbone. Do you have one? If peace means absence of war, this doesn't make sense. since They would be destroying cities. Yeah, they were going into battle. So God is referring to, to the inner peace of that heart, completeness with uh, sharing his countenance and his protection. So it's a peace in battle. They were to have an inward rest brought on by the presence of the Lord, regardless of how circumstances so it should be for that uh, for us as well will we focus on the conflict and the stress go get in the longest line or will you choose to live and walk in shalom peace and then continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem um, this uh, so it was good for evil or evil for good uh, again Matthew 11 12 a woe of rebuke by the prophet Jesus in these two chapters the first thing was a woe uh, verse 20, then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of the, his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazon. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done and you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they were repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment. Now that's coming up in the next teachings because there's going to be some judgments coming. In fact, there's, there's four times of... Uh, specifics and we'll look at that next week I'm excited about next week but <laughs> but he, he says it because uh, they did not repent he re, you know they were rebuked and then and he said they had, would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes but I say to you it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sodom in the day of judgment than for you verse 23 verse 23 and you Capernaum who are exalted to heaven will be brought down to Hades for if the mighty works which were done and you had been done in Sodom it would have remained until this day but I say to you it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment for, for you and of course what they're talking about was homosexuality um, uh, again Understand, these are, this is Matthew 11, 12. These are the things that Jesus talked about. And unless you overcome these things, uh, you're not gonna, you, you'll be saved. You'll have eternal life. But this is talking about having a substance where you're uh, working with, alongside Jesus in the kingdom, the millennial reign of Jesus. I remember talking to my friend Buffy about it, what, a couple, three years ago when she came. And we spent, I don't know, probably an hour or so talking about it. But it's, it's, there, it's, it's a substance, and it has to do with the same things that Jesus uh, rebuked here. These specifics, if you're not rebuking them, then why are you hiding in the closet? Jesus makes it clear rejecting the gospel is a more heinous crime than the crime committed by the sodomites. They were rejecting the warning given them by the uh, by Lot. Repentance is God's uh, will and pleasure, 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that should come to repentance, repenting uh, of what you spoke or what you did to somebody. Did you buy someone a meal to? Today. Did you um, did you do something? Did you take the trash out? You know, did you do something for your spouse? Did you clean? Did you wash your dishes or just load a dishwasher? Because to me, a dishwasher that's just you know that's somebody else doing it. But verse 10, but the day, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. That's interesting. And the heavens will pass away with a great noise as a thief in the night. And the elements are going to melt. There's going to be a heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person out you to be in holy conduct, uh, this godliness? 
looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of that which the heavens will be dissolved being on fire and the elements which will melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for the new heavens and new earth in righteousness uh, with that which we're uh, righteousness dwells there's um, there's not pills nor tent dwellings nor injustices is there injustice being done I'm hearing people going to prison for like 30 years and they did nothing you cannot see anything on the video so I don't know who these people are, where they're having this done, but understand <laughs> by the scriptures, rest was found in Jesus. It's a cease from anarchy and chaos, Matthew 11, again, Matthew 11, 25. At that time, Jesus answered, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent them and revealed them to babes, even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the, the Son wills will reveal. Uh, the son, Jesus would reveal the Father. So he says in verse 28, Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And then verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and I will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And there's too many times that people just want to find Jesus and take the yoke off. They want to go their own direction. And then they get further from Jesus. We're to cease from toil, to have that refreshment, resting in Jesus. Um, it's living with the, the Lamb's finished work in that victory, living wise and prudent, knowing uh, the revealed Father. Do you know the revealed Father? Well, you know, and I've heard, how many times I've heard just in two years, oh, well, God, you know, is just really good and He loves people. Well, He certainly does, but He is also a God of wrath. Right. Yeah, because He won't put up with sin. That's why he sent Jesus. So there's there's the door of opportunity, but you refuse it. You refuse it. Warning. Warning. He's returning soon. Warning. What will happen to you? Warning. The violent take it by force. Well, uh, Jesus is uh, taking grab a hold of this one because this is normal Sabbath, Sabbath regulations needed to yield a human need. We see this Matthew 12 verses 1 through 8. Uh, Jesus, Lord of the Sabbath. <laughs> At that time, Jesus went through uh, the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pluck these heads of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw him, look, your disciples are doing what is not full to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He and those that were with him, how he entered the house of God. He ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest. Or have you not read the law? This is interesting. It's interesting that Jesus would know this. Or have you not read the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath uh, and are blameless? I want to read that again. Verse 5, for have you not read the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? They, I mean, this they profane the Sabbath. These are priests. I was hearing stuff the other day. I just have to add in here. Uh, they said Abraham Lincoln's racist. No, he's not. I've I had all kinds of history on Abraham Lincoln and what I still hold today. He wrote the Gettysburg Address. Uh, he called slavery done, that people needed to stop it, and he, he was calling freedom. That's why the Liberty Bell was made, and guess what? It cracked because not all uh, the what at the states, 48 at the time or whatever, 46, was supposed to, and then nobody was in unity. And they're still not in unity because you have human against human. Right. You have human against human. And then uh, verse 6, he says, Yes, I say to you that in this place there's one greater than the temple, but if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Men were enforcing law over people in their knees. I mean, how far could they go on the Sabbath? And there's still Jews, hot dogs, still doing the same thing today. You can't travel, what, two miles? On the Sabbath, he gave men the Sabbath that he could do with it as he pleases. They were, were to do good on the Sabbath, and that included healing. You know, seeing the lame uh, be healed or those in need, uh, they even need healing. And so, so this healing on the Sabbath, Matthew 12, this is verses 9 through 14. Now, when he had departed from there, he went to the synagogue, but there was a man who had the withered hand. They asked him, was it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? That he, they might accuse him. And he says, well, what man is there among you who has one sheep and he falls into a pit on the Sabbath? Will they uh, not lay hold on it and lift it out? Question mark. Verse 12. 
of how much more value then is a man than a sheep. Therefore, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath? Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and was restored as, a whole, as whole as the other. So then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might destroy him. See, Jesus had to have peace of God. He had to have Holy Spirit because violence was coming about Jesus. But Jesus had boldness. He's going to stand against chaos and anarchy. Because he was going to get the word out till he was going to be the sacrifice. But Jesus gave instruction, stretch out your hand. What has God told you to do this week? My, the Holy Spirit was already telling my husband what things were going to be going on just 10 days ago when they appeared yesterday. Yeah, Holy Spirit. Jesus is healing of the man withered uh, hand also seen in Mark 3 verses 1 through 6. Well, this reveals a fundamental difference between Jesus and Pharisees and their approach to the Sabbath. Uh -huh. You still see pastors this way too. How do we enter to worship or do we just come to worship God? Are we seeking the welfare of others or out to seek those uh, who have or require some loving concern? It's the Pharisees that had not entered the synagogue to worship, nor did they Jesus the question is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath out of the loving concern huh no they weren't they weren't loving warning warning Jesus is returning soon this is a loving uh, comment to you warning Jesus is returning yeah it's not a hateful attitude Hypocrites were judging Jesus. Regulations that they had implemented into the religion was far from God. Um, they, uh, they were thinking they did not sin, and they're the ones that usually need to repent of sinning against God in their development for a consistent way of their doing. Their Sabbath conduct, these men compiled regulations, 1,500 covered just the Sabbath alone in total, 1,521 regulations. So they kept the Sabbath, but made up other articles to keep it was burdening them just like today we have taxes and taxes and oh yeah and taxes and this one's going to affect the what the house market taxes what and this man obeyed Jesus and put out his hand in obedience to Jesus restoration to the withered part of him leaders at times will be misguided by their own good uh, we must recognize the Lord in his healing that will liberate bring freedom bringing the man to live for Jesus to work and fulfill that purpose that God has for him this man was healed to see the rewards of righteous work and have victory in Jesus because Jesus was crucified and was raised from the dead so by faith we live spiritually connected to God. Jeremiah 17 and 9, our heart is incurably sick. God gives us the Sabbath day to help free us from the chronic problems of human nature. Amplified Bible, verses 9 through 11, the heart is deceitful above all things, exceedingly perverse, corrupt, severely, mortally sick. Who can know it, perceive it, understand, be acquainted with his own heart and mind? I, the Lord, search the man, uh, mind. I try the heart, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Now, um, uh, verse 11, it says, even, uh, let's see, verse 11, um, like the partridge that gathers a brood which she did not hatch and sits on eggs which she did not lay, so is he who gets riches by unjust means and not by right. He will leave them, for they will leave him in the midst of his days. At the end of his days, he will be a fool. There's many that's been trying to produce things to give um, old jabs or whatever, whatever you want to call them. I don't know what they'll be called next week. Um, but they do say they, they're planning another... Oh, let's see, another surpri <laughs> surprise, uh, another pandemic and a shutdown because WHO wants a rehearsal to shut the world down. Pray against them to know Jesus, to stop pandemics in Jesus' name, that they uh, must be seeing truth, that they not be blind by the world right. and its power. Hallelujah. So, um, you know, they wanted to re uh, destroy him. 
they had this planning, creating against the Lord, uh, and, 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 and they sought uh, not him who could deliver them from the rituals of man's ways and plans. Proverbs 16 and 9, a man's way plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. So anything outside of God is not a sure thing. It's a mortally sick person, and it's a death of that of a fool. Matthew 12, 22, again that debate. Matthew 12 and 22, this is a house divided, cannot stand. Uh, so uh, <laughs> then one was brought into him whose demon possessed, blind and mute, and healed him. Um, um, uh, uh, who uh, the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. So he was brought in, he was demon possessed, blind and mute, Jesus healed him. And now the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. Verse 23. I have this one circled. 23. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Let's see. Let's think about it. Could this be the son of David? Now, uh, when the Pharisees heard it, um, and then they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub. So they only want, they just want it to be a bad thing. It's a miracle, but now they want to say, you know, that it's of the devil. And so the ruler of demons, verse 25, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do our sons cast them out? Therefore, there shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. And he who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me will scatter abroad. So this is doubters. Mm -hmm. Doubters. They're, they're, they're not going to stand for Jesus. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're not going to have any backbone. Uh -uh. They're just kind of just, you're going to kind of be like in the wind and shifting here and shifting there and then falling back and going, you know, it's just going to be like a weed. But they're doubters. Because remember, Thomas got to see Jesus because he had been one of the disciples. But understand, there's doubters today. Right. And if you've got to feel it and touch it, yeah, you've got some problems. Because you're going to need to see Jesus. You need to see the spiritual and live in the spiritual. Not gathering in the Lord's truth will scatter and it will do it always. He will do it always. The demons are a kingdom divided. Jesus addressing the challenge. <laughs> he said his argument says, No, Satan will never cast out Satan. It would be stupid for Satan to cast out himself out. He is not saying that under every condition uh, that Satan or other demons will cast other demons out. Uh, they are capable of doing signs and lying wonders. And they can make it look as though somebody has been healed when God has not done the healing. Not but simply by the removal of one demon by another uh, of greater power. So it would be you know, Satan if he's doing it to another demonic activity. But other things that saves us... One of the things that saves us is that the demons are divided against themselves. They are kingdom divided. They cannot stand. They cannot get their act together because their character is such that they're always in competition with each other. Have you not seen that on what they call, you know, daily news? Have you not seen that, that it's kingdom against kingdom? Right. It's all these little kingdoms, and they're right, and they're wrong, and they're wrong, and they're wrong, and that's right. And like, but there's only two people standing there. It's like, okay, what is it today? You, you can't make up your mind who's right today and who's wrong because they're in competition. They look at division. So Jesus is showing these things that are active. They're going to be happening. It's happening today. Just look at the division scene today. One group wants one thing. Another destroys the city to speak to another thing. And then some denounce group, some groups and still others want to denounce the church. And then you have chaos. I love the chaos. There's the chaos picture. Um because I have that a note on it at the bottom of the page, I think. But we must have the heart of God to stand and speak against chaos, no longer slaves to a culture or a world. In Jesus, we have his weapons, his wisdom. Um, we have the, the wisdoms of God to stand against chaos. You can stand against hurricanes. I've told it many times here about standing against Hurricane Ernesto when he was going to hit the East Coast. What was that, 2006? September 2006. Um, we have the we have the ability because God's placed it in us to speak to the storms. 
Uh, number three, that we can understand this one. We recognize the governments and most of humanity has been subject to and deceived by demons. You know, what treatment has been done to children today, injustices, um, you know, in our law. You can see that carnal human nature, reflection of the nature of Satan and his demons. What fruit does that produce among men? Can men get along? Uh-uh. No, never. Men will not get along. They said that they had the really big war in World War I, and when they had World War II, they were amazed. And it was still man against man. And it's still demonic activity. Because there's that one that always wants the power, and it's the power of one, and one idea. Tower of Babel, it's, <laughs> you know, we're talking about the, this tower and, this, and it's, it's Babel and it's the, what was it, a build back, was that better? Build back Babel. But, so it, but it's actually build back Babel, build okay. back Babel. I didn't say it first, but you know, there you go. And so, you, the only thing that keeps them unified is the head of this organization. Um, it's a demonic activity, which is a head, would have some kind of a power. Um, but he, he does it by sheer force. This, uh, you know, as Satan, a manipulator, uh, the, those who serve him do not love him, or a kingdom divided. They fall and are, are in a, a disadvantage. They, <laughs> they will fall. Uh, and being rebellious, they're disorganized. They cannot get their act together. Um, they know God exists and they tremble before him but uh, you know they're restrained because we have the Holy Spirit and then Jesus addressed this too in Matthew 12 a pardon, um, pardonable sin people get scared at this one but it's <laughs> it's talking about uh, people who continue to say something against what it would be the Holy Spirit right. therefore I say to you every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. Jesus addresses this group who think they're religious and they speak against the Spirit of God. Uh, from verse 28 and of Matthew 12, Jesus performs a miracle by the Spirit of God. It's an indication of the presence of God in that place. So it's to see the healing, it's seeing people afflicted, uh, you know, the woman who had the issue of blood. You see, you see these uh, people who are blind or they're lame and, and they're, they're being healed. This is, Jesus is performing a miracle. This was the human need. And it was supposed to be done every day. The, you know, you have the, the man withered hand in the synagogue, but you have the woman with the issue of blood out in the street. So the blasphemy of lips and character of person, tree known by its fruits, Matthew 12 and verse 33, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Root of vipers, how can, um, can you, uh, being um, evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you, for every idle account in the day of judgment, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So John the Baptist, he called them brood of vipers. He was truthful. It was recorded for us to know you will have to stand against chaos and anarchy right. and they came to him he didn't go to them right. they came to him right. yeah the scribes and pharisees um uh asked for a sign matthew 12 38 i mean jesus had been doing all these things some of the scribes and pharisees said a teacher we want to see a sign from you verse 39 but he answered and said an evil and adulterous uh generation seek after this sign for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so the man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Which many say they believe it was in the earth somewhere around um, Jerusalem because that's where they believe the Garden of Eden is close by. Anyway, so that's where they, they say it was. I've been reading certain articles on that and things they've discovered. Um, but we're not looking at that today. Verse 41, the men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and will condemn it. Very interesting. These will rise up in the judgment. And this generation that's with Jesus is going to rise up and condemn. Uh, 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 from Nineveh will condemn the one in Jesus this time. He says, the queen of, of the south will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. And yes, that's Jesus. 
three days and three nights. Uh, the answer appears in the section uh, preceding the request. Jesus had been preaching that a tree is known by its fruit. Verse 33, these Jews asked for a son, and Jesus was to prove he was Messiah, but they wanted to see what fruit he would produce. Jesus swiftly rebuked them because the, for they completely missed the point. To satisfy their curiosity, they wanted to see a miracle, but the fruit Jesus meant was repentance. He meant repentance, good works, and spiritual growth to make them, uh, uh, they would be, wait, um, be made to wait to see the fruits of his ministry. The only sign that would be absolutely prove the truth of his message is one that he says I, that he had no control over. He says, I'll be exactly three days and three nights in the grave. I will not be able to resurrect myself. And he couldn't. Jesus could not re re you know, resurrect himself. Unclean spirit returns, 1243. The unclean spirits are returning to the United States. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it goes out through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came, and when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, put in, ornish, uh, put in order, or some say garnished. It's decorated. And then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell, late, uh, dwell there. And the last state, the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be also with this wicked generation that is to be warned that uh, any returning to past bondage uh, once delivered they will uh, whether it's you know any kind of smoking any drink or drugs going uh, back into bondage they will have more acti activity of darkness around them they're, they're going to have it really hard choose to trust Jesus for like Israel the nation reject Jesus nothing's left to replace the vacuum except satanic deception the violent take it by force Ephesians 2 16 and remember this is for this is a spiritual for Christians he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross thereby uh, putting to death the enmity and he came and preached peace to you who are far off and to those who are near in chapter 2 he is the peacemaker reconciled man back to God chief cornerstone consisting of God's people under the blood that covers so he's regarding now a strong a stronghold that's a lie, a place of bondage any place of, of personal bondage of God's word has been subject a subjugated to any unscriptural idea or personally confused belief is that held to be true. Behind every lie is a fear. Behind every lie there is a fear. There are people who lie to you and they want to put fear in you to line up and do something. And then it's like an idol is being, you know, being married to. Uh, people can put a, you know, put a future, future spouse in God's position instead of holding on to the Lord and hope for that future spouse. You know, that's what I used to do with my husband. I'd put him in, you know, God's position, and it wasn't for me to do that. I wasn't supposed to do that. I have to keep God in His position and and put my husband where He's supposed to be as I walk beside Him, not behind Him. I'm not the Indian maiden falling behind. No, I walk beside Him. I'm a helpmate. Weapons to God supplied for our use, God's word and his will. <laughs> and it's to pull down strongholds, Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God's living, powerful and sharper than any two its sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There's no creature hidden from his side, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him. We must give an account. So um, the, the blood of the cross is a weapon, Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony, and they did not love their, death, their lives to the death. Um, there was a woman who was um, killed the other day overseas, and I want to say it was either India or one of those other uh, countries, but for her faith, she had faith in Jesus Christ, and they told her to renounce, and she said no. And they always have to wear their hair up. It has a lot of pins, and they, their hair has to be really long. But she had a dream, and, and all she's like she was pushed to the ground, and all the pins flew out. The pins flew out. The pins flew out. And she said, "I will not die in dignit uh, without dignity." She said, "My hair, my hair will be pulled up." And she took time to put her hair up and find her pins and put her. Back, and they did. They the, they got rid of her. They didn't want. They didn't want to hear a bit about Jesus. Uh, and um, but she said, "You will not take my dignity from me because it, my dignity is in Jesus. I will look." like to whom I belong. Amen. 
And so the name of Jesus, a weapon, Mark 16, 17, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons, speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. This is the kingdom of God. This is walking through the kingdom of God. In closing, will the presence of God's kingdom cause each believer to be responsible to his spiritual warfare and anticipated victories, are we? The uh, evil struggles, <laughs> but there are always going to be evil struggles in that survival. Though he is cast down, still the serpent writhes viciously. Though temporal, the issue will be a standoff. We do battle in faith and faithfulness, looking to the Lord's kingdom and knowing that the Holy Spirit is preparing us for kingdom victories today. Grace and righteousness, the character of God saving sinners, is his act of grace and it's rewarding saints in his very act of righteousness. In the book of John, it's a, it's a God who revealed eternal life and he showed the way in writing about Jesus the way the truth and life uh, in revelation he reveals the rewards he disclosed the judgments of the saved salvation is eternal but serving in the kingdom of God serving alongside Jesus that's spoken about in the book of Revelation right. and we will see this the Christ uh, life is to believers uh, works and their victory to what we are to grasp and understand for the kingdom of God to be real in our thinking. In the coming weeks we'll see four judgments taught, uh, for we know that Christ was judged for us on the cross. Believers will judge as to their works before the judgment seat of Christ. The third is the nations to judge on earth, Matthew 25, 31 through 46. And fourthly, the judgment of God of the dead of the great white throne, Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Works are to be like that found in 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 13. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hair, straw, his work will be shown for what it is. But the day will bring it to light. Let's continue to light this with his word for thy reward that it's going to appear soon and it will happen really soon. Amen and amen.